Hey, this is YBR back with the coin game. And today we're watching a little robot walk by with a cute little rubber ducky ring around him. Unfortunately, he's gone. So now we gotta find something else to do. So we're gonna take a look at the new area that was added to the game a couple of weeks ago. Now when there's a new area added to this game, I like to start a new game because then I get a fresh wallet full of money. So we're gonna be the dude with a stripy shirt on him. And let's see, is the ducky dude coming back? Oh, there he is cruising along. He is now my favorite robot. I can't even specifically identify any other robots, but if I see DuckyBot, I know exactly who he is and I love him. So we're gonna be starting a new game in birthday mode because survival mode is still not implemented yet, which makes sense considering the developers are still adding big areas to the game, like the one we're gonna be checking out today. So the game starts out pretty much the same as before. We are at Larry's, but I don't wanna go to Larry's. I wanna go to the UFO. So we're gonna go ahead and fast travel to there, but instead of just teleporting there magically like we did before, we got a limo because I'm the special birthday boy. So I get the special birthday boy limo and limo's pretty cool. It has all this like color changing stuff in it. And then the driver actually will hop out of the limo, run around and open up the door for you. He is a great limo driver. So we can go ahead and hop out and you see they even rolled out the red carpet that says happy birthday on it. Truly the best limo service out there. And then he's gone. I don't know when he goes, but he is out of here. So now let's take a look at the UFO and by the UFO, I mean the building, not the giant UFO that is crashed into the UFO. How very confusing is that? One fun thing you can do though, is you can stand in the abduction beam of the UFO and get abducted. Okay, well you can't really get abducted, but you can look at yourself looking straight into the light, blinding yourself. That's the big fat dummy. That's my character staring right into the super bright lights. Anyways, let's go ahead and check out the inside of the UFO Raceway and Fun Center. So inside of here, we got a handful of new arcade games. And then we also got a couple of things that aren't arcade games, but they are activities. One of those things is go-karts. We're not gonna start with go-karts. We're gonna start with the top story first. And this is the laser zone. So we can go ahead and go play laser tag with the robots because apparently I don't have any friends and the only people willing to play laser tag with me were the robots. So they put my little suit on and I get my little laser tag gun. And the really hard thing about the laser tag gun is the laser doesn't exactly line up where you'd expect. Like normally in a first person shooter, the laser is gonna be right in the center of your screen, but this is like elevated upwards. You kind of look downwards a little bit as you shoot it. It's kind of weird to do, but once you get used to it, you can be pretty proficient at hitting the robots. And you can also get hit as well, like I just did right there. That was a great start. Apparently you can also get a bonus if you never get hit. I always get hit, so I've never gotten that bonus. The important thing is, is I get lots of points by shooting lots of robots. So you can kind of shoot them through the corners like this. Really good, sneaky way to do it. And it's hard for them to shoot you, hopefully. Although sometimes the robots will decide they are a sniper and they will hit you from who knows where the second you round a corner. And then all I can do is be impressed because most of the time they run around like fools. Like right here, they were all just running around like fools and I was destroying them until I ran out of ammunition. When that happens, you gotta go back to your base and then you recharge your laser gun and you saw, they were shooting me from, I don't know where, I was running away, they don't move that fast, but they had a sight on me and they almost had me. Somehow I managed to avoid it though. So now we got a full 20 shots. We're gonna make full use of them and up, oh, get shot ourselves. I'm waiting, waiting. This is for hitting me. This is, oh, they already got hit. This is you getting hit for existing. How dare you? Although you're my friend because you're the only person who will play laser tag with me. And I do notice there is one kind of way to be really cheap about this, like right here. When you hit them, they retreat back to their base as the laser thing recharges. And when they're all retreated back to the base, they kind of just clump together and you can just shoot them all one by one like this and get tons of points really, really easy. But it's not really fun. Like the other way, when you're actually running around, they get you in the corner, that's a lot more fun. So I would much prefer to do that. No, there is their sniping maneuvers. I am running away. I think I'm in the clear and then boom, just sniped out of nowhere. But I deserve that for spawn camping them. Although they shouldn't retreat when they're trying to, ooh, they hit me again. How dare you? I think it was you, so I zap you. Just in case though, I'll zap your friends as well if I can stop missing. Oh, the lights went on. So there is the final score. I got 31 tags and I was only tagged four times where a kill death ratio of 7.75. That's great. So now we can go ahead and grab my tickets. And what are we gonna do with these? We're just gonna take it with us. How about we find like a good place to just make a big old pile of tickets as we play everything. So we just stick them 
right on this little table right here. That will be perfect. Now let's go ahead and check out some of the arcade games like this one here called the Butterfly Catcher. So the goal on this game is pretty simple. You get the ball into the hole. Each ball has a different value and there are two ways to approach it. The first way is just click a lot and see what happens. Unfortunately, if you do it like that, you don't really get good results. As you'll see right here, I'm just gonna keep on clicking a lot. This time, okay, we got 10 tickets. That's not really great. That's the worst we could have possibly gotten aside from getting none like we just did again. And then one more where we just click. What do we get? Nothing again. So if you're just clicking, you might get 10 tickets. But if you plan out every click, you can do a heck of a lot better than that. So let me show you how to plan it out properly. You wait until there's a big grouping of balls and then you push. You'll get at least one, sometimes two if you do that. So that's 20 tickets. That's not bad. That's double the amount of tickets we got in the last game. And the other strategy you can use is pinpoint what you want. Like, I want the yellow one. So I try to get the yellow one in, and we did it, so we get 50 tickets. And then on the left side, you see the yellow ball is lit up. If you get all of the different colors and light them all up, you get a bonus, and it doesn't have to be in just one round. So basically, if you play long enough, you will get all of them, unless you miss it like that. So I see a 250 right there. I want that 250. Boom. We have now 32 times more tickets than we did last time. And it's pretty easy to just kind of keep getting the colored ones if you really try for it. So, like, I'm going to try just to get all of the different colors I can in just four attacks at it. So, we'll try to get the orange one here. There we go. Orange is in. And then next up, we could try for the red. Is it going to line up good enough? Eh, not really. We'll wait. How about the purple? Purple looks pretty promising. And it is just barely in there. So, now we got pink, red, and blue left. Pink is right on the edge, so that one looks like a pretty good option. Pink is in. Almost got two. Now we just have red and blue left. Not the best angle for this blue. And the next one is kind of buried, so I don't know if we'll be able to push it out all the way. Pretty good attempt at it, but not quite. We still got 10 out of it, though, so we got 160 tickets, and we got four of the six buttons on the left side lit up. But I think we're done with this game, and it's time to move on to the next one. Now, unfortunately, the next one, which is Mermaids from Space Coin Pusher, is out of order. Or it's coming soon. It's actually coming soon, but I like to say it's out of order because it feels like a real arcade if you say it like that. But it's a coin pusher that has three sides to it, so it looks kind of interesting. I wonder how that'll work out. But next, we have a game everybody knows. This is Skee Ball. Now, the way I see it, there are two ways to approach this. There's the difficult way, which is shooting for the corner every time and trying to get 100 or nothing, which doesn't work very well for me. Or there's just the try to get some points. So you kind of throw it right in the middle. If you overshoot a little bit, that's fine. If you undershoot a little bit, that's also fine. So like we're basically aiming for 40. If we overshoot it, we get 50. And if we undershoot it, we'll get 30. So by the rule of averages, we should get about 40 tickets per ball, which uh, that ain't half bad to me. It's a heck of a lot easier for me to do that than try to go for the corner. Although that last one was just awful. I gotta throw it harder than that. That was a good one, a nice 50. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could try to aim for 50. I'm just too afraid that I might accidentally overshoot it. Like I'm trying to aim for 50 and yeah. I'll overshoot it. So go for the gold. And the last shot, go for the corner. I can't. Like, the ball bounces back when I go for the corners. I'm not good at that. But I am decent at getting in the 50 zone. Another 50. So we had eight balls. We got 340 tickets. Do we average about 40? Yep. In fact, we averaged a little bit over 40, even with that 10 I had. So next up, we got down a bot. And this one is very, very simple. You just throw the balls and knock over the targets. And we have a lot of targets to try to knock over. Now, if you want to maximize the points, the way you do it is you try to hit two at once. And then also, you want to hit the red one that lights up. Because the red one that lights up, that gets you bonus points. And it has a really weird laugh when you hit the red ones down. It's only the red ones. All the white ones, they don't have the weird laugh. But the red ones, they go like, ha ha! And you have unlimited balls here. You're just limited by the time, which has now ran out. But well, we got 450 tickets that fast. This one is very, very efficient for getting tickets in a short period of time, actually. So we're done with that. Next over here, we got the Iceberg Bounce. And for this one, the goal is to throw ping pong balls and hit every single tile on the ground. And the best way to do this, I found, is you throw it at the front part and let it just bounce around so it gets the ones in the back automatically so you don't have to worry about those. So the first row has been cleared. Now we can kind of focus on the ones that are a little bit farther away. Actually, probably the best thing to do is just go row by row even. We do first row, second row, then we try to go to the third row. 
And you never know, you might get lucky with the bounces and then just finish up a row even if it's way crooked because those balls can really bounce all over the place. You never know exactly where they're gonna bounce. And since we cleared the whole thing, we go to the bonus round. And on this one, you have a very limited amount of time, so you just gotta throw them as fast as you can, try to get as many as possible. I've never actually cleared this round, but I have got a pretty good way through it, like I did right there. So we got 6,209 points, which is worth 310 tickets. Pretty decent payoff for that one. You can see my tickets coming out. Hi, tickets, I love you. And we can try out the next one, which is called Just Toss It. And all we do here is we throw a ball. And whatever hole it lands in, that's how many points you get. Now, most of the points are only worth like 20 or so unless you get it into the milk jug. That's worth 250. So my goal should always be to try to get into the milk jug, which I almost had. And what you gotta do is you kind of figure out what do the corner parts of the screen look like and where should the ball be covering the screen? And you use that for reference to try to shoot it the same every time. And there is a toss into the jug. That's 250 tickets. That's not just points. Those are straight up tickets we just got. There is another 250. So we're at 520. We still got two balls left. Another 250. Ah, oh, that one just is a little bit off. Where's it gonna go? Into the 10. Not too good. Try another 250. Looking pretty good. Nope, not quite. Got 25 though, so that's 550 tickets. That was really fast for only 550, but I did get two perfect shots. So that's that wall of the games. Now we can go ahead and take a look at the center section. First off, we have the Typhoon, which is a game I think pretty much everybody knows. All you need to do is you hit the button to stop the light. I'm not good at this. I am really bad at this. As you see right there, I missed it by a bunch. We'll try it one more time try to get a little bit closer than that because that was shameful. I want to get it like at least close to the center one. There we go. That is the center, isn't it? I don't know. I only got 30 tickets from it apparently, but I thought I hit the center. It doesn't really matter because that's not my kind of game. Uh, Whack-a-mole, that's my kind of game. And we're going to give them a whack. And the secret strategy is you always be whacking. Just non-stop. Whacka, 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 whacka. The second you stop whacking, you're done. And thankfully, you do not have to click for every single whack. You just have to hold it down and it'll whack for you. And I am missing my whacks. I got to stop talking about whacking and just do it. There we go. Now we're whacking them. Well, mostly. I missed another one there. We're going to do another one of these. I'm going to do a lot better than I did this time. I promise you that because this time it has not gone well. 150 tickets ain't bad, but I just know I could have done so much better. So this is the real serious focused YBR doing real serious whacking. Perfect 100% whacking so far. That's my goal is to get 100% and don't miss a single one. I wanted to say mole and I might have said it earlier, but it's not whack-a-mole. It's whack-a-bot. And it is kind of strange to me that I'm whacking the robots who are my only friends. Like, can you imagine if there was a whack-a-mole where it was just people's heads? That would be kind of strange. And yet, that's basically what I'm doing here. So we got, ooh, 500 tickets. I think that means I did miss a single one. Or maybe I just missed only one or something. Because I think I might have missed one. But either way, that was a great run. And how did you get a sparkler, dude? I'm jealous. I wish I had a sparkler now. Although I'm pretty sure I could go and buy one. Oh, look at that! They're twins! Although only one of them has a sparkler, the other dude got something else. All right, next up, we have a game called Lock Tower. And for this game, you can rotate all the pieces on the board to try to direct the ball into the correct location at the bottom. The best one you can possibly get is two balls because then you get double the score you normally would. I almost had it there, but not quite. Instead, we got 25 tickets. I want two balls. We're gonna get Two balls. Oh, it's falling already. So we rotate every gear all at once, basically. And uh, I can't rotate it to left towards two balls. So I got to rotate it right really hard and just hope I get lucky. And I did. So we got two balls. All right. And they come one at a time. So here is the first ball coming out. And you'll notice the two balls area has been replaced with 100 points. So we'll try to get the 100 points. If I just rotate it fast again, that should work. Except it didn't. Instead, it filled 25 tickets. Okay. What if we just let it fall as fast as it can? Oh, 30, you're killing me here. You're supposed to fall into the 500. All right, so that's that game. And we have another one of the Typhoon games, which I am not good at, so we're gonna pretend it's not even there. And now we're gonna move on to Wormhole. So on this one, it's a ball dropper that has a nice little spiral to it. And you could use some strategy to try to figure out 
the perfect place to drop the ball. Or you can just be like me and click it whenever you feel like and see what happens. Maybe you'll get lucky. You probably won't, but maybe you will. But the good news is even if you're not really doing good, you'll still get like 100 tickets from this one. So that's 115 tickets from just mashing the button. We'll go ahead and do this again, but this time we're going to actually try to hit the jackpot. And I don't know why it just says zero total tickets, unless it just means that's how many you have for this game. In which case, yeah, duh. That was a failure. That one is perfect. 252 tickets for the jackpot. And now at this point, I don't even care. I got my goal. The rest of the balls can go wherever they want. 15, that's fine. Where are you going? Ooh, almost in the jackpot, but instead we got 70. 70 is pretty good. So that's 347 total tickets and oops I accidentally hit play again didn't really mean to do that so this one we're just gonna chuck them actually you know be funny for this one we're gonna try to never get it into the high scoring ones we want just the low scoring blues and that's two for two can we go three four three yes and then one more time into the blue whoop <laughs> I was trying to do bad and I accidentally did like the a great one that was better than my first one by far all right, well, that's the wormhole. And there's also a machine over here called, dude, where's my cow? Which looks like it's gonna be like a claw machine where you can pick up these really cute looking cows. Can't do anything with that though. So let's take a look at Popcorn Pete and friends. And this is another coin pusher, but this one has a little bit of a timing element to it where you gotta get the coin through the little target area to get the best possible score. So you see, it goes through that and then it shoots out some extra coins and whatever bonus you get, depends on the little light that's spinning around in the center area so like if you really want to do this good you have to have really really good timing and really really good patience you gotta wait for the light to get the right spot in the spinner and then you have to time it where the coin goes through the little thing in the middle so you get the bonus because if you don't go through the little thing in the middle you don't get the bonus so like if i for example wow that's a lot of coins if i shoot it uh like that that's a miss that was a miss that was a mate that was actually supposed to be a miss but apparently i made it anyways there's another miss so that's what it looks like when you're missing and then now let's go and try to up oh, we're out of we're out of coins i was gonna say go back to making it it doesn't even matter anymore and also if you collect all eight cards you get a pete blush pete's not that cute i like the cow better i'd rather have the cow so that is the coin pusher over here and then that is also the final arcade game in this area so out of all of these games, which one is my favorite? You know, I think my favorite one is going to be the Iceberg Bounce. This one's really fun because just you throw the ping pong balls and they bounce all over the place. So you never know exactly what's going to happen with this one. There's a little bit of elements of chaos to it, but it's also skill because you got to hit the tiles, right? Like it's just the balls are bouncing everywhere, hitting the tiles in the back, in the front, just all over the place. Fun to do. And we're doing pretty good this time, actually. In the tiles real fast. Still got eight seconds on the clock. And one left. Got them all. I don't know what to do now. I think if we just keep bouncing balls, we get more points. So I'll just keep bouncing them for now. Now for the bonus round. The hard round. The round I've never cleared before. Let's go. I've also noticed the first ball never goes in the direction I want because I'm clicking it too fast, I think. Come on, come on. Getting close. Nope, not quite. Again, pretty good score. And... Unfortunately, the amount of tickets we get is only 300, which isn't that great considering I feel like I can get a lot more by just doing the uh, down a robot over here. Like last time I did this, I got 450. So if I did that again, I could probably easily beat that score. So now the one you have all been waiting for. It's time for the go-kart racing. And I always get suspicious of indoor go-kart things because you got to have some really good ventilation for that to be safe. Otherwise, you're going to have exhaust fumes everywhere. You're going to be coughing that up, inhaling that. That's bad news. So for the go-karts, it's kind of like qualifying. You have six laps, and your goal is to get the fastest lap you possibly can. And whoever has the fastest single lap is the winner. It does not matter if you crash on five out of the six laps and only have one good one, as long as that one good one is really, really good. And driving the go-kart, the one thing I've noticed is you never want to slow down ever. You want to maintain as much momentum as you possibly can. The second you start touching the brakes, you're gonna have a bad time. And by bad time, I mean your time is not gonna be as fast as it could have been if you were flooring it the whole way like I usually try to do. Although unfortunately here, I went a little bit too wide, so this is not gonna be as fast as my previous lap. 
In fact, you can see the AI is actually driving a little bit faster than me through there. Although the AI times don't really seem to match up with what they're actually doing. I think they're just kind of random. And okay! You guys! Y'all need to chill out! You just destroyed me, man! Oh! And I just destroyed them. Okay, now we're even. We're even. It is not easy, by the way, to pass the AI sometimes. Like, you just kind of bump into them a lot, trying to get the outside line, the inside line. Just any line. Just please let me get by. And then you finally do it. It's just like, thank you, thank you, thank you. The struggles are over. Except there's like five more AI in front of me. So do not expect good times for the rest of these laps. And oh, I passed them. But at what cost? I had to go way too steep into the corner. Oh, he's pushing me. He's pushing me. Oh my goodness. Oh, no, I'm stuck on my side. Wow, okay. Now, the thing is, though, is I don't think this lap is going to count. If you start cutting corners like that and flying across the track, the game knows. And it's going to be like, uh-uh. You got to stay on the course and do a full lap. I think everywhere you see those little tower things, that's where it, like, tells if you cross that section. Oh, they're hitting me. Okay. You need to chill out a little bit, son. Oh, he just overtook me. Oh, no, no, no. Get out of my way. I am the leader. You follow the leader. All right, this is going to be my worst lap yet. It's going to be a... Oh, 24 seconds. Huh. So I guess the other lap did kind of count? Or what happened? I don't know. I wasn't really paying that close of attention there. Either way, 24 seconds. Not as good as my first lap, which was 21 seconds. In fact, somehow, the very first lap I did was the fastest lap I've ever done. I've never done a 21-something second lap before. It was always 22-somethings. I had low 22-somethings, like 22.2. .2, and then somehow I just whip out a 21.6, which is way in first place compared to all the other times. I almost wonder if there was some sort of glitch with the timer or something, because that just doesn't seem right. I'll try to have a good lap on the last one, but I'm making no guarantees. There might be a robot right in front of me who I have to try to pass, and then I crash in him and I flip upside down. I don't know what's going to happen. So final lap. Here we go. Don't let up. Just keep flooring it, keep flooring it, keep flooring it. Got through those corners perfectly. This corner is a little bit harder. You have to slow down just a bit. Otherwise, yep, yeah, you're gonna crash like that. and You just lose a lot of speed if you crash, so this isn't gonna be as fast as the first lap, that's for sure, but it might be a 23 second one. It's gonna be close to it. Let's see, it's a 23.473, and we are in first place. That means we get to go and stand on the podium and we get a trophy. Although I don't know why we're in the car still. There you go. That was weird. So there is our trophy. I like the fact that that dude's sign right there. It says, way to go YBR. It's not just like a regular generic sign. It actually has your name on it, which is cool. And what in the world? What are you guys doing? You are a bunch of idiots. Oh my goodness. They're just crashing all over the place. Oh, the party's over. So this trophy, yeah, I could go and take it with me. It only costs like $5 to do the go-kart race and they can afford to do a trophy that big somehow. Don't ask me how that works. Hop these guys out right over all of them. They don't even know what to do. It's like, I, I am baffled. I'm going to go back to where I came from. Oh, we got to make a big old pile of tickets. Just fun. We got to see like how many ticket things did we actually get? I don't care about the actual number of tickets. I want to see how many piles of tickets do we have? And there might be a couple more than you would expect due to uh, editing where, you know, the first run or something didn't go to us. So we edit that one out. So I have two piles of tickets in some places where you think there'd only be one. You never know. And I don't even care if I hit the table or not. We're just chucking him in the general direction of the table. And whatever happens, happens. It seems like most of them are falling off of the back of the table. So that when I tried to make sure I did a little short and instead it just fell off the front. Woo! Ooh, that one actually made it. I tried to like really throw that one a distance and it made it perfect. That one, not quite. It almost made it. Then it decided it's time to fall off the table, which was really disrespectful of it. Yeah, that one didn't even touch the table. You know what? I might want to play that game one more time. I kind of like that one where you just throw the balls at the robots because that one's just nonstop action, action, action. I think that's the kind of game I like more. The ones where it's action, 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 game over. Versus the ones where it's like you got to have the timing right and you're waiting. That ain't me. So like the butterfly one that's like waiting for the timing. And then the, the stupid light one, which I am terrible at. That one's waiting for the light to come around and it's timing it right. I like the go, 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 fight, fight. Whoa, where'd those tickets go? There they are. That was weird. I like the ones that are like, go, 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 fight, fight, fight. Do, do, do. Ding, ding, ding. That one's kind of okay. 
because I just treat it as random and just smash the button and see what happens. I don't actually try to time that one at all. Oh, that throw almost made it. It was a good throw. I wonder if I could just like do a discus throw and just like fling it like that. Oh, <laughs> it could almost work if I was actually able to aim it. I was just flinging my mouse so fast it went wherever it wanted to really. You know, how many tickets do we actually get from that one? Do we get a lot or do we only get a little bit? I want to see. I'm kind of curious about this one now. Just make sure we'll get all the tickets first and then we'll mess around with a couple of machines that I want to mess around with. So I think we got one ticket here and then that should be all of the tickets all gathered up in one big fat pile. Now, coin pusher, how many tickets do you get when you do good or bad on it? We're going to try bad first and then we'll do good afterwards. Now, by bad, I don't know if I should just try to actually miss it or... Okay, whoa, I just got three free plays. So, yeah, maybe on some of them, I'll actually try to miss it. And then some of them, I'll just click it. And if they go in, they go in. Because I feel like a bad play is going to have a mix of some that go through and some that don't. Because it would actually take skill to make it where not a single token gets through the hole. Then we have another one that doesn't, another one that doesn't. This one does not. And then that one does. So you might get two or three if you're just clicking it at random. Maybe four if you're lucky. But most of them aren't going to make it through. So how much do we get from this? Only a measly 28 tickets. That's it. 32 tickets. It changed when I looked down. Now this time, we're going to try to get as many coins as we possibly can through the bonus hole. I'm not going to worry about where the light is on the wheel. I just want to make sure I get the bonus on as many as I possibly can. That's good. Good. Can we get three in a row? Yes, we can. How about four? Oh, I can't fire it yet because it's still shooting them off. How about now? There we go. So that's four in a row. And if I want to track wait until the push is pointed out and then shoot it. Although by the time that actually does anything, it's pointed in the other direction. So it really doesn't matter too much to me where anything is. All I want to do is get it in the hole. Oops, that one didn't get into the hole. If we go 11 for 12, that's still great. Even 10 out of 12 would be great, but we got 11 out of 12. Got in a rhythm at the end there. and We're just nailing it every time. And wow, 18 tickets. I thought I did an amazing job there. I got 18 tickets. I don't know how this is. It's just whatever, man. That is wacky. It's not supposed to be like that. I give up. Whoa. That was weird. I just kind of teleported there for a second. All right. Look at this, though. I could go over here. Do down a bot. And I could get like 400 tickets just like that. And this one's a heck of a lot more fun to me than the other one. Because you got to aim and stuff. And the hardest thing about the aiming games in this game is that you have like no crosshair or anything. So you just kind of like got to estimate where the center of your screen is and then just shoot from that spot. If you wanted to kind of cheat a little bit, you could get like a little sticky note and kind of place it right in the center of your screen as a crosshair, I guess, if you wanted to. But once you get a feel for it, you really don't need to worry about it. Like right there, I got 400 points or 400 tickets, I should say. And I have no little cheat thing. I didn't need it. Maybe I could have got 500, but 400 ain't nothing to sneeze at. So again, my beautiful pile of tickets there. What a disaster I've made there. And you know what? I'm just going to leave them there because there is one really dumb thing I want to show you guys and to do that I need to leave the building because you can't fast travel until you're outside of the building I think so I want to go to I think it's berries I almost wanted to say Larry's but I think it's berries oh why is it so dark in here oh I got the solution for this ah flashlight now I can see everything oh well the lights came on anyways I don't know that's kind of weird like it was dark for some reason so I'm berries if we go over here you can see, look at this fancy car. It's like a Lamborghini looking car over here. Just parked completely wrong. But it's neat there. And if you shoot it, the alarm goes off. Also, I think if you stand on it, the alarm goes off as well. And if you wanted to mess around, you could go and go to the third person mode. And be like, hey, I'm taking a selfie with my brand new car. It's a Lamborghini. Well, maybe not a Lamborghini because, you know, they didn't pay for the licensing. But it's a very nice sports car. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, it's YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by the number of tickets I get. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.